Today I'm going to be doing a demo geared towards the more intermediate or advanced painter. Here is my setup. I've picked some berries and leaves from my garden and I'm loosely going to base my demo on this. I would just like to do a little bit of preparation before I start the demo, thinking about colours. Um, on my arrangement I have these very sort of dry shriveled up leaves but luckily I have got some of these leaves that I pressed during autumn. Look at the different colours, browns and oranges and reds, beautiful. And I have my berries, lovely sort of pillar box red berries so I need to look at my colours relating to this. I've got permanent carmine which I love to use, I'm going to use that as my red, it's my cool red. And I have a colour called Pyrrole Scarlet made by Daniel Smith. This colour is a lovely pillar box red and it is beautiful because it's transparent and mixes so well with other colours. A lot of people use cadmium red which is a similar colour but ca the cadmium is not great for mixing with other colours. I'm going to use quinacridone gold for my yellow colours. When this colour is diluted it's a beautiful soft yellow and when you use it quite thick you get this almost um, ready brown colour so it's ideal for leaves. Then I'm going to use a, a dioxazine violet or Windsor violet for some of my shadow areas. I'm using a plate this time. I'm going to mix quite a few colours on my palette and I find that using a plate, a white plate like this is easy to uh, use you just wet the colour and bring the colour into the centre and mix. I am spraying my board with some water just to get a sort of random uh, wet and dry area. I haven't done any drawing on this paper yet. I'm just creating this first layer, the first wash with my uh, three colours, uh, Quin Gold, Permanent Carmine and the Dioxazin Purple. I don't need a drawing at the moment, I'm just creating a colour background. Basically thinking where my berries will be, I've got the red and I've got um, the yellow and mixture for the leaves. My wash is quite watery so I'm going to add some more stronger paint. I'm just softening that area at the top, I don't want, I want a light area at the top so I've left that add some more stronger paint. My board is flat so it's not mixing too much or running down too much. I just wanted to mix at a horizontal level. Just add a few more colours and I think that's just about done for the first layer. My first layer is now dried and now I'm going to try and draw berry shapes using negative painting with my brush. Some berries are on their own and some are in groups, just kind of randomly there and I'm softening the edges so I don't want circles, I want some light round shapes to appear. I'm going to move it on a bit because you don't want to sit and watch me doing these. Um, <laughs> forever and ever but you can get the gist of this is the first sort of layer there we go now I'm while it's wet that sort of background area of the berries I'm dropping in some uh, stronger paint I want some good shapes there to show up because I'm going to do washes over them so I'm continuing um, adding a little bit more paint behind my berries creating my little round shapes these are the ones that are going to stick out but I'm going to create more in that a red wash behind. So it's a little bit laborious but it's actually quite meditative to do. I need some dark red paint behind there and I'm softening it towards the edges so that I don't get a sort of hard line of berries there. I just want it to melt into the, the, leaf, sh the leaf shapes. My most sort of prominent berries are going to be those ones on the right hand side, sort of middle-ish low. Now I'm creating some uh, leaf shapes with my Quin Gold, 
just drawing some of that wet wash out into the rest of the painting. I need to connect. And I'm just creating shapes. I'm not, I'm drawing with a paintbrush and dropping in color. Creating some hard lines and then some soft lines. And you get these lovely veils of transparent paint. I'm now establishing where my, my branches are, um, the berry branch with some stalks and bits of wood. They look quite prominent at the moment but they're going to have washes over them so they will um, get combined into the painting but I just we need to know where they are. I've mixed up a little bit of darker paint with the purple and red and I'm just creating some berry shapes in that pink wash behind the more prominent berries. I'm now going to do my first sort of wash over those prominent berries and what I want to do is with a very light wash create a berry shape and leave a little highlight on some of those berries that's right and then sort of integrate the light wash into that background so it's not there's no hard sort of double edges Some of the berries I'll just paint with a light wash of pink without doing a highlight. At the moment they look like sort of teardrops, but it just that's the second layer of the berries. We're going to come over with a stronger wash in a minute. So let me just finish doing my painting those circles of light getting them all with a sort of slight pink um, coverage, coverage. Yeah, they look like sort of water drops at the moment but they will come right I make some stronger color and some weaker color because you want a sort of variety of berries berries that are on the sort of the upper part are left less um, obvious. Now I'm going to integrate some of that wash into my leaves again. So whenever you're working on one part of the paper keep your eye on the rest of the paper and, and see where you can integrate and paint so that you don't finish one area um, to a more sort of highly finished sort of stage um, than another area. I'm now adding some more dark under some of my berries. I really need some really dark, but it's just red dark. I'm not putting any sort of blues or purples there. I just want strong red color behind them at this stage. creating more berry shapes as I go. Now I'm adding this lovely pyrrol scarlet. It's a lovely pillar box red, really berry red to some of the berries. Um, I'm painting around that little highlight there. Still keeping their shapes there. The highlights won't be white or light at the end, but at the moment I'm keeping them light. Oh, this, this red is gorgeous but now the berries are really standing out and the leaves need a bit more attention now giving a bit of splatter I love doing splattering it's very random now I'm going to come in creating more negative painting leaf shapes. I'm looking at my leaves, looking at my shapes and seeing where can I make more leaves. 
it's purely on the paper I am creating from what I've got already and creating shapes I love doing this just add a little bit more dark behind a leaf and there you go you've got a leaf and you don't have to go all the way around each leaf just suggest an edge here and there I need some strong paint against those berries next to the berries now this quin gold is lovely you know when you use it quite thickly it's quite sort of really brown or orangey color but when it's used in a diluted um, way it's really light yellow quite a versatile color creating more leaf shapes some hard edges some soft edges and dropping in stronger color Now I'm having a look at that top right hand area and I think I need more leaves up there so I need to create some shapes. There's a little bit of a shape there that I'm going to use as a leaf and then I want a bit of a stalk coming from the top so I'm creating a, a negative shape stalk with some leaf behind it. And there's a nice leaf there now. No, that's no, that's the wrong shape. Look, there's a nice leaf. Yep, that's right. There's a nice shape there. I need to warm it up a bit with some red. And then come over. I like making little veils over other layers so that the transparency shows through my stalk works there now I'm just cleaning my plate I want that pyro scarlet and I'm going to cover my berries with it and you think oh what have you done but what happens when it dries it um, is more transparent it looks quite opaque at the moment so let's have a look and see and I'm just softening those edges I don't want a whole red blob there so I need to integrate it into the painting and don't scrub with the color because I, I want those layers underneath to show through once it's dry add a little bit of red here and there to the rest of the painting and I think that's just about it I'm giving a bit of splatter It is dry now and I can have a look and see um, I now need to finish off the painting with some little bit of dark area here and there areas here and there just to bring out certain bits of the painting so I'm going to add some stronger red paint behind some of the berries again just really it's strong creamy paint creating a sort of edge of berries there a few more berries there berry shapes sort of wafted off into the sort of the side of it taking some more strong red paint I'm just about finished here now so I'm just re-establishing a little bit of the um, branches the berry branches which have kind of wafted away into the background with the washes on top of them so just just re-establishing those then I'm having a look at this leaf in the front uh, 
it looks quite prominent and I would I think I need to dampen it down a bit for the composition to work so I'm creating a leaf on top of it coming over it with some paint Getting a bit of stronger color because I want it to sort of I've got to be real think about when it dries need it to sort of stand out a bit I'm just going to dab it with the tissue to create a little bit of texture here we go and I think that's just about it I hope you've enjoyed watching this berry demonstration just adding a few more branches and I think that's it.